What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 164 of Category 5 Technology TV for Tuesday, November 9th. 2010. Nice to have you here. It's nice to be here. Fantastic. Hey. Good to see you. Hey. How's your week? Nice to be seen. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Good. So yeah. far, so good. Yeah. Fantastic. I need some more nano dots. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, tonight. Tonight. We are going to be learning how to run Planet Calypso on a lesser computer. If you've got an older computer, you haven't been able to get it run very well. We're going to be talking to you about how you can do that. Uh, also, of course, answering your questions right there in the chat room, Category 5.tv. Uh, join us in the chat room, join us for the live show, and of course, if you're watching this after the fact, if you're catching us on Miro Internet TV or iTunes or any of our syndication partners, be it uh, a Roku box plugged into your television set or one of those cool Google TVs that allow you to watch Internet TV on demand. However you're catching the show, you can email me live at category5.tv. Welcome back to uh, Hillary Rumble tonight. Hey, Hill. Hey everybody! How are you? Uh, broadcasting from my dorm room, and uh, it's a great, wonderful day. Sorry, I'm a little choppy. That is because of my remote location. It's probably your roommates. I was saying there's probably a party in that dorm room. The, the roommates okay. with their uh, with their torrenting and things like that. You can't really control that, can you? Oh. True say. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, so, Hillary, uh, what have we got coming up in the news tonight? Oh, you better believe it, people. There is lots going on in the world of technology. Canonical plans to drop the X window system from Ubuntu Linux. The number of online security breaches in Canadian industry and government is up, but the cost is down. Apple is stepping out of the real server market and rep rec recommending its users instead of their Mac Mini or Mac Pro systems as servers. X marks and blog line live on. And lastly, we rely on Google so much that a simple error on Google Maps could lead to war. Stick around for the latest news from the Category 5 TV newsroom. War. War. <laughs> Don't make an error. Hey, tonight we are also taking qualifiers for the brand new brother, MFCJ615W. If you want to stick around and find out how you can win that beautiful printer just in time for Christmas. How's that sound? Sounds good. Good. Sounds good. Thanks, Hill. We'll come back to you in about uh, 25 minutes. Alrighty. So, what do you got going on? I, you know, I, I, I'm not playing hockey right yet. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in computer geek mode. I'm here with you. You were saying? Found my glasses. I left those behind last left week. Left those behind. We're good. Yeah. Um, so you were blind all week. I have been blind all week. Unbelievable. Should we go into some questions? That'd be great. All right. Get All your right. questions in live at category5.tv or pop me uh, a message in the chat room, category5.tv. Oh, and before we go on, hey, John. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm very, I, very no, good. I didn't know. It a whole new meaning to the idea of four eyes. Did you. S s Literally. That way, I <laughs> that way I won't forget my glasses <laughs> and leave them on the desk. You realize he was looking for his glasses just moments ago. <laughs> he was probably looking around. Now, with John uh, joining us tonight, with the microphone that he's got on. John, give us a sound check. Testing, testing. There you go. Everybody can hear John just fine. Now, John is using uh, a rechargeable nickel metal hydride 9 volt battery in that, uh, in that microphone. Oh. We like to use rechargeables around here because it's environmentally friendly. But next week, we are also going to be doing a test with eco friendly, uh, eco alkaline batteries. So t this week, we are testing with this rechargeable battery, which is eco friendly because it's rechargeable. But as you may remember, we've got that issue where all of a sudden John's microphone starts to pick up interference. We've had that problem with that microphone for a long time. So what we want to determine is, is it the battery that's allowing interference to get through because the battery is not providing enough current? Interesting. So next week we're going to be testing with an eco-alkaline, which is an eco-friendly disposable battery, which is biodegradable and does not contain chemicals that are harmful yeah. to the earth. Maybe it's something John ate. 
<laughs> no, that was, that's a different kind of interference altogether. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna be. So if you hear any noise coming off of John's mic tonight, <laughs> other than you know the, the slurping of the, the coffee, room. the slurping of the coffee and the burping and all that stuff that, that John normally does, um, if you hear any of that uh, <laughs> that alien noise that we commonly get off of that microphone, uh, make sure you let us know in the chat room because that is going to be our test over the next two weeks. I think that's gonna be fun. Oh. John, it's good to have you here. Thanks. Thank you. I see somebody's out there commenting on, on, on my beard, and I'm just really just doing it to... Are you, are you working it in so that, you know, come December yeah. 24th, you know? Well, perhaps. I just figured uh, <laughs> your, your lack of hair, I figured I should Compensate. bring a little extra. Yeah, Compensate. balance things out. Yeah. Okay, this we have my attempt. We have an English teacher here it's asking a question. I don't know if that's uh, going to be a. Well, let's let's do. Well, it. Let's see what it is. This is from Will Harper. Hey, Will. Hi, Robbie. You responded to a UStream chat. Oh, in 2008, he's been saving this one up. Okay. Anything about you. That, <laughs> anything that you do as a web host, or if you're. However, this is like being married. It's going to come you back know? to haunt you. Do you remember what you said? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> two years ago. <laughs> All right, well, Will, okay. you tell me what I said two years ago. And so I'll, you responded to a Ustream chat in 2008 All right. about an external mixer to be able to Ustream with Skype connections. Oh! I am a teacher of English as a foreign language, and I need to Skype with both my conversation and the students while stopping, starting, and controlling a video on my desktop for the student to respond to. Would you mind suggesting a sample wiring diagram to accomplish this? Thanks, Will Harper, T-E-F-L. Will, I am not good with diagrams, I'll be honest with you. Hillary, I've got you up on the screen right now just to show the, uh, the Skype system that we have in place. Um, so with Hillary, of course, she's connected in to Skype through another computer. So we have a computer that is a dedicated computer specifically for Skype. And so uh, what happens then is the sound output from that computer goes through our mixing console. So we've got just a standard uh, TAPCO little, I guess an eight channel TAPCO mixer, uh, which does the job for us and does a really good job. So Hillary, if you, uh, if you talk to me here. Hey, I'm, hey everyone, Hillary here. Go. So she's actually coming through channel four. Now if I mute you, Hillary, you can still hear me. Um, but we can't hear you at all. Blah, 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 blah. You might have heard her through my microphone, because I can still hear her. <laughs> That's the neat thing about this kind of a setup, is that we, I can hear her. I've got her muted on the channel, so you're just hearing her through my microphone. She's going through the auxiliary so that I can, list, I can actually monitor uh -huh. what's happening on Skype. Thanks, Hillary. And so in that case, what happens is, is that the sound output from that computer, here's my diagram, it's, it's not very visual. The sound output from the Skype computer goes to the mixing console. The mixing console also is connected to my microphone, so I'm on channel one. Hillary on the, that Skype computer is on channel four. And we could do loopbacks and we could do fancy sound processing and stuff like that, but I'll be honest with you here, Will. What we're doing tonight, and, and I think Hillary, you'll probably say, and notice I'm reaching up here just to unmute her microphone. Uh, Hillary, how's my sound tonight? Can you hear me okay? You sound pretty great, actually. I'm impressed with the sound, to be honest. Like, I talk on Skype to my friends and family back home, and I don't know, like, do you, you're just coming in really clear. It's great. Excellent. So, Will, what, uh, what we're doing is right here. I don't know, John, maybe I'll, I'll zoom out just a little bit so that you can get a look at that. There it is. Now, you could use a blue, uh, like a snowflake or anything like that if you want to use a, a really nice microphone, but all I've got is just a, a cheap little Logitech webcam that I picked up at a thrift shop. I think it costs five dollars. Good now, deal. That webcam, I've got it sitting on a quick pod, so it just it's easy for me to adjust where it's located. We don't use the camera of it, we just use the microphone. It's got a USB connection, it goes into the, the that dedicated Skype machine, and the only person who hears the audio from that microphone is Hillary, the person who's on the other end of that Skype call. Works very well. I'm sure there's other ways to do it, and of course, if you had to, if you were in a situation where you had to loop back audio, then that's a different thing altogether, but because of the nature of our show being a talk show, uh, all Hillary needs to be able to do is hear us. There you go. That's all there is to it. So not much of a diagram, I know, because I'm not a, an artiste. 
but I hope that that makes enough sense. That, that was uh, not, not much of a diagram. That was no diagram. That was no... <laughs> Dude, if I try, my daughter draws better stick people than I do. And that's the truth. We should have a Pictionary thing going on. Oh, <laughs> I would fail. <laughs> Thanks for the question, Will. I hope that that kind of points in the right direction. But it really, it does boil down to, I've considered doing virtualization, doing my Skype that way, which is a cool way to do it if you've got the resources to do it. But then you've got to worry about duplexing, and then you've got to worry about are the levels the same across all the microphones? Because if, if Hillary, for example, had a really, really hot mic and, uh, and was super, super loud compared to somebody else running through that same virtual kind of setup, because there's no mixing going on, the nice thing about this setup is I can turn down Hillary's microphone, I can turn up Hillary's microphone, or however I want to do it, because it's all on, a, on an actual physical mixer. Works very well. All right. Thanks, Will. There was a bit of a backlash when you muted Hillary in the chat room. Oh, they were sad? Yeah, they were sad, so Aww. no muting Hillary. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> at some point in the proceeding, she's got to say cool beans for us, doesn't she? I oh, think that's, that's part of the news. Oh, okay. You're just right. going to have to stick around. Okay, well, last week we spoke with um, Doug Townsend. Hey, Doug. And uh, the, the question, if uh, you want me to recap, he was having a problem with the Ubuntu 1010, and uh, it was installed on a uh, a bit of a lesser computer. That as was you that would old say. one with the 128 megs of RAM. That's right. Yeah. And um, so he was having trouble with the desktop. So, hello, Robbie and Eric. I wrote you last week with the problem described below, and as you asked, I'm writing back with the results of your suggestion. I did, as you said, I used the Ubuntu safe mode to load the desktop and it worked. I have changed the desktop right. to no effects and plan on upgrading the RAM and adding a video card. So oh, thank you good news. from Doug Townsend. So, Doug, you're very welcome. I, I appreciate you uh, getting in touch with us just to, to let us know. Yeah. Um, I always love to know when something that we've suggested has Well, you helped. send it out there and you want to know. Like, Absolutely, but in happened? a case, especially in a case like that where it could have been so many things and, and we're kind of drawn at straws because we don't know all the specs of your system, but I'm very glad that we, uh, we were able to help you with that and exceptionally uh, glad that, uh, that you're able to boot that system and actually log in now. That's, that's fantastic news. So if you have problems with your technology and uh, you'd like to get a, uh, at least an, an attempt at an answer to your question, that's what I'm here for. You can email me live at category5.tv, and uh, we'll do our best to, uh, to help you out. And uh, Doug will say that, uh, hey, he helped me out. So <laughs> thanks, Doug. Hey, uh, consider submitting a viewer testimonial too, Doug, if you, if you could. Uh, those, that kind of locks your, your testimonial into uh, like our, our kind of time capsule of testimonials. So uh, I'd go. appreciate that if you go to category5.tv, click on Interact, and submit a testimonial. Okay, so Gadwill, he's testing Canadian pronunciation. I, I'm not sure where he's going with this. He wants to know if I can pronounce bash. Um, now, are we talking about a party, like a bash, or a bash like a smack upside the head? I think or? you've mentioned partying three times tonight. Just an observation. <sighs> I'm about to get bashed, aren't I? I I'm going to try to behave. Ah. Oh, Workhouse says I got it right. Or that was Workhouse 105. Great. Okay. But if we were talking about Bosch. Okay. Yeah, no, I knew he meant Bosch. Okay, yes. <laughs> uh, shall we move on? Why don't we say hi to some new viewers? That'd be great. Yeah. Who we got? We have Tasha23 from China. Hey, Tasha. That's pretty cool. We have Case from Compton, New Hampshire. Hey, Case. And we have illegible from nowhere. Oh, instant tempo CP sixty two from US of A. Hello. I'm not gonna try. <laughs> instant dot dot dot. I think that's nice instant here. tempo CP sixty two. Welcome to the show. Um, I'm I'm thinking that might be taxi zero seven. Toxy 07? Could be Toxy 07. Or it could be 07. We got, uh, we got... From Germany. On one hand, just just not to interrupt what you're talking about here, but on one hand, we've got 
the people in the chat room making fun of the pronunciation over on this side of the table, and then on the other hand, we got the the guy making fun of the the handwriting. <laughs> you know, you could come in 15 minutes early before the show and uh, and I was on a mission. We're not going to say what that out. mission was, but I was on a mission today, <laughs> and I, I I barely I barely got that. here. He, he sent me out on a scavenger hunt. We'll leave it at that. Cheers. Um, what else we got? Well, Sprint Cowboy from Indiana. That's a bit easier. That was nice much easier. Great. So there's some some somebody from Germany. We think it's Toxy, zero seven. It nice might be oh seven. Everybody here. If you'd like to uh, register on our website, it's a free service. Category five dot <laughs> dot TV. Omit the cough from the middle of the URL, and you'll be able to get there. Category five dot TV. We'd love to have you as part of the show. More questions. <laughs> and when I well, hear the sigh, it's like, okay, there, there, there was silence, and I thought I'd better, okay. Here we go. Um, this is from Peter Lewis. Hey, Peter. And last week you talked about formatting hard disk. About format hard disk. Does remove the data on... <laughs> I'm going to take a run at this. Are you going to make it through? I can help you. Okay. On B disk. Okay. Last week you talked about formatting the hard disk. Does removing the data on the disk? Uh, I think you're paraphrasing. Uh, well, you have to. <laughs> what if you removed the partition of disk? Will this remove the data? We're talking about. This was a few weeks ago when we were talking about. Oh right. You data were expanding. security. Episode 158 when we were talking about data security. I think it was when we were talking about the fact that if you delete files, you're actually not deleting the files. So what is right. being asked here, and, and I apologize, but the, the email is just a little hard to read, and, and that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out what you mean. Um, if deleting the partition itself, recreating the partition, formatting that partition, and installing a new operating system or whatever over top of it, if that actually removes the data oh, from the disk. Your data are gone. But is it? Why? Well, Oh. So here's a question for you, Peter. When you delete a partition on your hard drive, does it take four hours to do that? When you create a partition on the hard drive, does it take four hours to do that? Definitely not. When you format your hard drive, does it take four hours to do that? Definitely not. So what's actually happening as you're doing those processes <coughs> is it's manipulating the structure of the drive from basically there, there's information on the drive that tells the drive how to read and write where the files are located and things like that so when you do a when you repartition the hard drive you're changing the partition table but you're not actually changing the data that's on the drive the the um, I guess the alternative to what you're asking there is a, what's called a low level format and that's where it does take you know, multiple hours because it goes through sector by sector and clears out your hard drive. A different thing altogether than just a standard format or repartitioning your drive. So when you delete a partition, you've basically thrown away access to those files. Then you create a new partition over top of that. You're not overwriting the old partition, you're just creating a new layout for any data that's now going to be written to the drive. So now, as you populate data onto the drive, it's going to slowly overwrite the old data. But up until sector by sector, each piece of that data is overwritten, you still could theoretically access that data through data recovery, through uh, the gentleman who was collecting hard drives at the recycling facility. If they subscribe to data recovery, they'd be able to get information off of that drive. So to answer your question, long story short, Deleting the partition, repartitioning, formatting your hard drive does not safely uh, purge your data from the drive. Only way to uh, to really do that would be a low-level format or a tool such as Derek's Boot and Nuke DBAN, uh, which will do that for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, War Cow mentioning you could use DD to uh, to randomize each sector of the hard drive. Certainly, there are uh, multiple different tools to. Uh, to do something like that. DD is a Linux, Linux command. You could do that from a Linux boot CD if you like. Completely destructive. So, but do uh, check out the, uh, the show that we did on uh, file security uh, on your, uh, I think it was 158, um, 
where we discussed things like uh, Derek's boot and nuke. That'd be a good idea for you. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I misinterpreted the question. I thought perhaps he was just thinking if he took away the partition, whether he'd still be able to access his data when he well, the end went user back to it. usually would, and the end user would not likely. No, but somebody with a recovery somebody with lab some knowledge, or some, a data yeah. recovery lab, forensics, uh, somebody who has even some software tools. You'll remember way back, just to put it in real lay speak. Remember back in the lay speak. Well, I like that. Oh, in in the good. Windows 3.1. Windows 3.1, Windows 95, Windows 98, even into XP, um, but especially those earlier ones. You could format your hard drive, and then there was a tool called Unformat. Yes, there was. Remember that? Yes, I do. There was a tool called Undelete. So if those mm -hmm. files didn't still reside on your hard drive, how is it that those tools existed? Because all that those would do is they would recover <laughs> the information so that those files could become accessible again. May I point out that undelete did not always work? It didn't always work because some of the <laughs> yeah. sectors belonging to your files could have been overwritten by other files. As long as the files weren't partially overwritten or completely overwritten, right? Like think of it as like yeah. a, one file is the whole pie. So if you clear the pie and allow other things to be written all over, then you, you are corrupting the data. Interesting. A corrupted pie. <laughs> hey, All Corey. Right. Nice to see you. Nice to see everybody joining us in the chat room. Is anyone joining us for the first time tonight? Would love to hear from you in the chat room, category5.tv, or join us on Freenode in the uh, category5 room. All right. Hmm. Oh, Robbie did the Reckon likes peach pie. I uh, can't help but think of uh, Flight of the Concords. That always gets stuck in my head. I like pie. You'd have to have seen I, it. I missed that. I, I must have been on the road that day. Must have been. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Hillary. The humans are dead. <laughs> we can start talking binary. There we go. Wow. What do you got coming up? You got well, more stuff? We have more questions. Yeah, we'll um, get those in. Okay, well. And if you've got a question, like I say, get it in the chat room. Say, hey, Robbie F. Say, hey, Eric Kid. We'll, we'll say hey back and we'll hey. answer your questions for you. Indeed. So, we have a question from the Netherlands. Peter. Hey, Peter. From the Netherlands. Hello. Parted Magic Boot CD is a Ubuntu CD with a lot of programs. Mm. Okay. The CD boots fast, even on a 256 meg PC. In the menu, you find DD to erase a hard disk and more. Um, there you go, right along the lines of what we were just talking right. about. So, test disk and photo rec to recover files. You can burn files to DVDs of a non-working PC. You can check your HD with Smart. Uh, with Parted Magic, you format a hard disk. Clonezilla and Ghost for Linux to make a copy of the hard disk. TrueCrypt is also usable. You can check what hardware you have with Hardware Lister. Nice CD for your listeners. Greetings, Peter. So that wasn't really a Thanks, question. Peter. That was just a just a great heads tip. up. Hey, there's lots of lots of great stuff out there. Yeah, it's like a, a boot CD that boots you right into Linux. It's got all these great tools for partitioning your hard drive and fixing things up. I see uh, Gpart Ed there, which is a fantastic uh, partition editor, and all this stuff is available for you for free. Oh, right on this website. Thanks for the magic dot com? Dot com, yeah. Okay. Is this now is it a free disk? Now the the software that it's including are free. Is this is this actually free? It looks like they go by donations. That's fair enough. So take a look at it. There you go. First download the file and unzip it. There's an ISO so you can burn that to a disk. And then if you like it, if it's been helpful for you, don't then drop the disk. Don't drop the disk. Don't break the disk. Don't lend it to Eric. No offense. I'm offended. And then uh, if, you, if you like the disc, like I'm saying, there is a donate button, and I would encourage you to, uh, to donate to, uh, to services that you feel have been helpful. So give it a try. Partedmagic.com. Do we have a donate Thanks button? Thanks for the tip. We sure do. Okay. Yeah. 
Anybody buy you a... No, never mind. Lately? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not what I was getting at. We were talking about part ed magic. Okay, okay, fine. I'm... It's like uh, I downloaded a really great tool for, for Joomla. We're, we're working on our new Category 5.TV website. I'm very excited about the new website as it's very coming cool. along. Downloaded a, a free tool for Joomla that saved me so much time. And, and what was that? I think it's called Admin Tools. It's from uh, the same company that does the uh, the backup software, Akiba Backup. Okay. Uh, and just a fantastic tool for Joomla. And just saved me so much time. And so the first thing I thought is, you know what? This has saved me so much time. This is I'm going to use this over and over and over again. So I'm going to find a way to donate to the to the person who created this because it's it's just going to save me time. It's helpful, and uh, and that's kind of the way that I I kind of think as far Very as that cool. kind of stuff goes. Yeah. Because I could have paid for the software, but they didn't force me to. It was a free download. So yeah, yeah. Well. Should we, Should we, uh, uh, I think uh, it's just about time to say hello to our friend Hillary. Hey, Hill. Ready to do hey some news? Hey, everybody. Hi, Hillary. <laughs> oh, I've got news. I have lots of news. And if you guys are ready, I will let you have it. Here we go. All righty. From the Category 5 TV newsroom. A couple of weeks ago, Eric reported that Ubuntu will be using Unity on the desktop instead of Gnome Shell. Now, as a shock to many, founder of Canonical, Mark Shuttleworth, made another bold announcement on Thursday. The X window system, which provides the foundation for almost all Linux desktops, will be excluded from an upcoming release of Ubuntu, Canonical's flagship product. Many have believed the X to be a bit of a bottleneck when it comes to extreme graphic performance for quite some time. However, a big player, such as Canonical, has the power to change things for the Linux world. In Mark's big announcement, he made it clear that the OpenGL-based Wayland will be the Windows system of choice in an upcoming release of Ubuntu, continuing to push Linux towards ultra-smooth graphics and effects. While Shuttleworth admits these things are possible on the X, he states that it is extremely hard and isn't going to get any easier. Shuttleworth's company wants to drive Linux to become the ultimate user experience and doesn't mind forfeiting some features in order to get there. Mark assures Ubuntu users that Canonical is confident they'll be able to retain the ability of the or the ability to run X applications in a compatibility mode. So this is not a transition that needs to reset the world of desktop-free software. While it is believed Canonical could deliver something workable within a six-month time frame, Shuttleworth is projecting a year to be a more realistic goal. So perhaps we can expect this change in time for Ubuntu's 11.10 release next October. Despite a study by TELUS and the University of Toronto finding a 29% increase in online security breaches within Canadian industry and government, it has been determined that the cost of these attacks has actually dropped substantially. The study found that rather than exposing sloppy security, the dramatic increase in known breaches was caused by better security and detection. Essentially, security breaches are being detected now, which would have not been noticed in the past. Better IT security is also credited with finding that the cost of security breaches is down, even though the number detected is up. The overall cost of security breaches was decreasing by around 78% over the past year. Ending with the XServe line in January, Apple will no longer be manufacturing or selling true servers. Any XServe servers sold between now and then will still carry the standard one-year warranty, and the AppleCare Premium service can be purchased to cover the systems for an additional two years. Linux continues as a leading server OS, and for good reason. Apple's exiting from the server market will only increase Linux share. Cross-browser bookmark and password syncing service XMarks will remain alive, it seems. The company is in the final stages of a sale to an um, to an as-yet-revealed new owner who will keep the product alive. The new service will have a free and premium component, and details will be forthcoming. So those of you who have already switched, you can come back. Another product, Bloglines, a once popular RSS aggregator, also slated to shut down, has been sold to the, mercan uh, the Merchant Circle. Merchant Circle provides a business directory for merchants in smaller towns. The free service will remain, and new services will grow around the technology. The clippings feature will be discontinued, but all the other features will remain. 
And if you've ever been annoyed that Google Maps has led you in, down the wrong road and in the wrong directions, at least you can be thankful the error didn't cause a war. Google is fixing an error on its map of Central America, which gave the Nicaraguan commanders an excuse to invade a disputed area, also claimed by Costa Rica. A Google spokesman admitted that it had misplaced the border, adding it uh, had corrected its mistake after viewing an official State Department map. Costa Rica, which has no army, was very pleased by this. But Nicaraguan authorities protested Google's correction, saying that the tech giant had it right the first time. Get the full stories at Category5.tv slash newsroom. The Category 5 newsroom is researched right by Roy W. Nash with con contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru, Becca Ferguson, and our community of viewers. So if you think you have a news story that's worthy of on-air mention, email us at newsroom at category5.tv. Category 5 TV is brought to you in part by Planet Calypso. This massive multiplayer online game is available as a free download from cat5.tv slash calypso. Now once you've got it downloaded and installed on your Windows computer, make sure you say hi. And there's something for everyone here on Planet Calypso, from hunting to mining, crafting, and just plain socializing and having fun with your friends. You can download it for free at cat5.tv slash calypso. If you're a Linux user like myself, of course this makes it worth the dual boot. cat5.tv slash Calypso. I'll see you on Planet Calypso. This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online at www.category5.tv. You saw Planet Calypso there. I saw that. And, you know, I encourage people to check out that software. It's a fantastic game. It's available as a free download at cat5.tv slash Calypso. And uh, it's cutting edge. It's, uh, it's based on the Cry 2 engine. The thing is, though, being that it is so graphic intensive, a lot of people have trouble getting it working on older hardware. So I set out this week to find out, can it be done? I've got a reasonably good computer system. I've got quad-core Q6600. The i7 kind of puts it to shame, but it was, it was a fairly decent processor. And, and certainly with the quad-core, it gives me a little bit more power than... Uh, than the average home computer. I've got eight gigs of RAM. I've got uh, a nice video card now with the uh, with the one that we just put in with the GTX 460 All right. from NVIDIA. But the other computer that I have is just a straight, uh, basic old computer. It's a Pentium 4, like the old style 478 socket uh, processor. So I know that uh, a lot of viewers have tried to check it out and have had issues with getting it uh, getting it running on their systems. Now, I won't, uh, I won't pretend that you can get it working as well as you could on a quad-core system on an older computer, but can, it, can we get it working? Can we get it playable? I think certainly we could. The computer that I've been testing with is right here, and it is, as you see, a 3.2 gigahertz Pentium 4, which shows up as 2.11 gigahertz with 2 gigs of RAM. Certainly nothing exceptional. And then as far as the video card in this machine, it is a NVIDIA GE Force 7600 GS. So even a, uh, a fairly low-end video card in this computer as far as modern specs go, because modern specs say, okay, a 7600 is, is extremely low. So possibly you may have something even better than that. I know uh, with AGP you can get up to, uh, now the 7600 is, is probably the best you're going to get for AGP, like an older computer like this one. So this is uh, quite a dated computer at 3.2 gigahertz, Pentium 4, socket 478 with only AGP. Um, but uh, Gadwell here has a 7300 SE. Then what happens with the 7300 is we're getting into really, really uh, low-end 3D because those cards are designed for uh, office use. They're not meant for gaming at all. Um, so whether or not we'll be able to get it going on that system, that's, that is going to, you'd have to kind of try it. So the trick with a system like this where, you know, we've got a really old hardware, we've got a very basic video card compared to today's standards, basically we're going to get graphics looking kind of like this where all the textures are gone, there's me in the game. What, what good is that when things just don't look 
at all like they're supposed to. So what we'll do is we'll go into the options screen here and the first thing that you want to do is you want to change the graphic quality to safe mode which basically takes everything and turns it down to a safe level which is safe mode it's like it turns off all of the effects basically so from there you've got a clean slate and you can start increasing the quality of certain items as you go different video cards will react differently to things like shaders so if you're getting a lot of flicker in full screen mode you might want to play around with the shader uh, or you may try even running in windowed mode uh, some of the older cards will do a lot better in a windowed mode as opposed to full screen because full screen uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be dealing differently with your shaders. But then again, if you're having a lot of flicker in windowed mode, you could try full screen and it might be the opposite thing. So back at my screen here, I've set everything to safe mode and it's asking me if I want to apply, so I go ahead with that. And then I can go to advanced and you can see that I can change my avatar quality, which is currently set to safe mode, and increase that to say medium and just bring up my texture quality just a little bit just to get things testing and you'll see as I apply that that the textures are substantially better than what it was before and you'll also notice that it's not choppy as far as the actual gameplay goes uh, because I've turned down you'll notice the horizon for example I can't see anything beyond the hills I can't see anything beyond the field that I'm currently standing in because what I've basically done is I've said okay I don't really need all this, the special effects beyond the horizon. I don't need to be able to see the stars. I don't need to be able to see the clouds. So I've just got a, a blue sky, basically. And so I've disabled a lot of the things that are going to require higher graphic power. So you can see the textures are still not perfect, but as far as the gameplay goes, I'm able to actually play Planet Calypso just fine. So this is a way, by starting with safe mode, you're able to then slowly increase the quality of the different uh, variables if you find that uh, certain things like the shaders are, are acting kind of finicky then take it from safe mode and put it up to low and then apply that and see if it and see if it comes uh, and, and works uh, then take the the very various settings I wouldn't go any higher than medium with an older older computer and uh, you'll be able to hopefully get into the game be, a, be able to get it to the point of playable as you saw there with the hardware that I have we're able to get it uh, completely playable with a 7600 GS card, which is well below the minimums for the game, and yet it makes it just uh, just fine for playing. Nowhere near the quality of what I'm getting from my 460 GTX, of course. Textures are not the same because I've got everything in safe mode, but it's operational. So with that in mind, I hope that, uh, that you'll give it a try, cat5.tv slash Calypso, and once you've got it downloaded and installed, uh, make sure you let me know because I'd love to meet up with you in the game and uh, and say hi. We uh, actually we we actually own. Here's something for you, Eric. All right. We we own a couple of vehicles in the game. In Planet Calypso, so that we can actually. I don't know if you can get a wider shot here, just because we've. I'm just. You, I, where where are you? I'm, I'm going to be impressed, am I? No. Well, the, the vehicles that we have, I can take up to sixteen passengers, oh. at a, at a time on excursions and things like that. So. Uh, so it'd be a lot of fun to have some Category 5 viewers join us uh, on Planet Calypso and have some fun. And a lot of stuff going on on Planet Calypso right now with the robot invasion. We can go on a road trip. Definitely go on a road trip. See some robots. And we'll have some fun. So give it a try. Cat5.tv slash Calypso. And I hope that, uh, <laughs> that that helps you get it running on your old, old system. There you go. Cool. All right. Y you look like I, a gamer. Well, huh? You look like a gamer. I, I'll bet you if I sat you down. Wolfenstein? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stop! If I sat you down in front of Planet Calypso, you created an avatar, and we sat here and we and we just had an evening of it. I'll bet you you'd enjoy yourself. Are we drinking coffee while we're doing this? Definitely drinking coffee. <laughs> okay. I'll bet you you'd have a lot of fun. We'll have to. We'll have, we'll to, have see to do that do. some night. Anybody uh, playing the game uh, currently? Uh, message me in the chat room. Category5.tv. Of course, uh, Jot is here and saying hey. Uh, he's saying, uh, remember, you may still want to turn down your avatar quality and other settings in busy areas. Yeah, certainly if you're, if you're in an area where there are hundreds of people, because the neat thing about Planet Calypso is you're, you're interacting with real individuals from around the world. Okay. Um, Jot, for example, I'm, I'm quite often uh, in there and, and hanging out with him in-game. In uh, but you can be in a place where there's 200 people 
And so if you've got a really, really low quality system, it can be, it can be hard to move around. So making sure that particle, uh, particle effects and things like that are turned off on an older system is very important because those kinds of things can slow you down big time. But certainly, if you notice lag, turn things down a little bit. A. Jameson says that, uh, that he plays, but is horrible at it. Well, I'd love to meet up with you, and we can be horrible at it together. I'm not a, a good gamer by any means. I'm a social gamer. Oh, I thought you were. No, I am a social gamer. I go in, and, and I pretty much just hang out and drive people around, and I have a spaceship that I can fly. It's pretty cool. Well, John no, thinks that's you don't hilarious. have a hovercraft, eh? John has a hovercraft, doesn't he? He does. I bought one, too. Oh. In-game. Oh, okay. Not a real hovercraft. Oh, okay. Watch out for crocodiles. I'm not going to. It was an alligator I was talking about. It was an alligator. So have you been tweeting this week? <laughs> After, I, I sent one tonight. No, I, I, I was traumatized by my last tweet when I went back and looked at it. Speaking of your last tweet. You know, because I do, in fact, like to uh, make fun of people uh, when they mess up in their email and other things. It's not like Eric ever corrects my... No, heavens... No. Do we even have the notes? He, he hands me notes during the show saying, you use this word incorrectly, and he'll <laughs> underline the particular word. And so oh. you wonder, you know, what we're looking at down here. We got these pads, and he's right now. I, I can see where this is going. You can see where and, this is going. And, and you may just, Hillary, you may be uh, taking this job back. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, last week, I was, I, was, I was on you my way out. I was leaving. I thought, oh, I better send a, send you a tweet. You insisted that, you know what, I can multitask. <laughs> and I can do this. And if you don't believe me that he insisted, <laughs> let's, let's just, let's review. Let's review. Okay. Sorry, kids, I have not been tweeting like crazy. Mm -hmm. You I, really need to, dude. I'm not sure I have an excuse. Well, I didn't do it. Is that an excuse? You should tweet, sorry that I haven't tweeted. I, you don't need to do it now. I can do that right this second. You, you really can watch. Should. Eric, you insisted. You can't deny that. <laughs> My friends, Eric <laughs> cannot multitask. <laughs> In recent tweaks, tweets this week, Eric tweets, oops, not tweets for a week. Man, I'm horrible at this. I hope you folks enjoys this week. <laughs> this week's category five show hillary what do you think of that <laughs> i think that's pretty wild that is and funny unbelievable unbelievable <laughs> thanks for that one eric what else have we got in recent tweets we've got jono bacon who says hey congrats to the fedora team for releasing fedora 14 and then he provides a download link specifically for fedora and jono bacon of course being i believe he's like the community <laughs> head honcho as far as Ubuntu goes at Canonical. So very cool for him to be uh, congratulating Fedora and certainly with Fedora 14 coming out. I think that's a, a fantastic thing. Fedora is another distribution of Linux. And of course, you can follow Jono's link there if you'd like to check it out. Coco Puff says, would have bought an Android tablet if any were available in Canada. And that resounds across Ooh. Canada, I'm certain. I think, uh, yeah, being able to buy a tablet that's based on Android would be fantastic. And I know that we're going to start seeing these things coming out. But I almost wonder, Coco Puffs, what do you think of this? With the announcement that Hillary gave us tonight about Ubuntu switching the windowing system, with us, with the knowledge that they're switching to Unity as opposed to GNOME Shell, it really feels like Ubuntu is being driven towards, and this is just my own opinion, that it's being driven towards the tablet. The, the changes that they're making to the, to the windowing system, for example, in, in a year from now, are going to accelerate graphics to the point where, theoretically, we could say you know, those, all those multi-touch functions of the iPad suddenly become available to Linux. My theory would be that we're going to start seeing not just Android-based tablets, but that Ubuntu-based tablets are going to be uh, a really cool thing, uh, let's say, and let's hope, a year from now. Certainly, I, I think that would Mark be Mark that down. It's November 9th. <laughs> Wouldn't it be <laughs> awesome, though, if there was an Ubuntu-based, or Linux-based at least, uh, outside of Android? Uh, Android's fantastic, of course, but um, I guess I see Android as more of a sm smartphone. But then again, iOS, right? Same sort of idea. It's hard to say. <laughs> but I kind of feel like Ubuntu's pushing for that. 
Cocoa Puffs, I'm with you there. I would love to see a, a tablet that I could hold in my hands that is Linux based. That would be fantastic. So, any of you uh, tablet just, uh, makers, well, see, Robbie would like it's to the have. IPad. Oh. It's the iPad that is. Yeah. Okay, now we've got to compete against this. And so all of a sudden we're going to see some startups, and we've, we've reported on a few that are kind of coming, and a lot of them start up and then fail. And a lot of them we hear are coming, but then they fail. Or they're not multi-touch, or they don't, you know, they're powered by Windows. And while you can zoom in on stuff, it's not the same effect. Uh, a friend was telling me today, like, you can't zoom in on an icon and have the application actually be the icon and, and all these kinds of things with Windows. So there needs to be another operating system for these kind of tablet devices. Uh, that is not Windows and that is not Mac OS or iOS, I should say. Mark the Tri Geeks, Geek says OpenSUSE is installing now via a virtual machine. Looks nice so far. And sent that to the Linux chat on, uh, on Twitter.com. Um, and certainly, OpenSUSE is another Linux distribution. So I did not know that. Good idea there, uh, Mark the Tri Geek, uh, to give it a try. In your virtual machine, you can install VirtualBox for free. VirtualBox.org, get that downloaded. Something to mention about VirtualBox. Somebody had said to me, "I didn't realize that you could get a free version of VirtualBox because I've heard of the non-free version of VirtualBox." And something that I really should clarify when you're talking about VirtualBox: when we say non-free, this is gonna this is gonna astound you. It's free. You don't have to pay for it. When we say non-free, what it means in the context of something like VirtualBox is that there are drivers that are included. There are subsystems that are included and support for firmwares that are included in the non-free version that are non-free. They're proprietary. They're not open source. Mm -hmm. But the software itself, doesn't matter which version. You can go with the full version of VirtualBox, the non-free version and it's free. You don't have to pay for it. So that said, get VirtualBox at virtualbox.org and download any of the Linux distributions and give them a try. If you're running Ubuntu and you're curious about OpenSUSE or Fedora 14 and you want to give it a try, but you don't want to commit to it, or if you're running Windows and you're like, oh, I'd love to try Ubuntu, I'd love to try Linux, download VirtualBox, get it on your machine, it's free, and then you can try any of these operating systems within a virtual machine. And that's exactly what Mark is doing there. You need lots of, it's a great idea. lots of resources to run that, don't you? You need to have enough resources for both operating systems, the host and the guest. Most modern systems are going to have that. So you're not doing that on your P4? Mm, it would with, be pretty laggy. But you, yeah. you, when you're working with an old system like that, you kind of expect to have to take your games and cut down on the graphics. Okay. You can't expect to have super performance on a P4. That's just the way that is. But yeah, you could probably do it. With 2 gigs of RAM, not likely. You might want to do it with 4 gigs of RAM minimum. Great idea there, Mark. I actually tweeted, uh, John, you'll find this uh, interesting. I said, the pogo plug makes it so much easier. I was limited to 140 characters, so I had to take out the word so much. Okay. For me to send all the photos from Christie's wedding. The gallery, the slideshow, downloading of full resolution images, and the previews. So nice. John, you didn't you, have room for so in there either, did you? Well, I had to cut it down because I had to cut yeah. words out. John, you received the Pogo Plug chair after the wedding, which has all your mm -hmm. photos from the wedding, the video, everything. How was it to navigate? Oh, did you look at it? The Pogo Plug's in Peterborough. No, but I sent you a Pogo Plug chair. Did you get to look at that, or was Christy looking at it? That would have to be Christy. Oh, Christy looked at it. I would have loved yeah. if you had had a look. But, oh. So she shared them with you, I suppose. Yeah. So, so that was how easy it was, is I basically took oh. all of that stuff, I put it on my pogo plug, and you got access to it by email. So all those high-resolution images that you've printed, they all came off of my pogo plug. But the oh. interesting thing is that I spent, so much, I spent so much time, John, trying to get, you remember, the night of the wedding, because mm -hmm. obviously you're, you're anxious to get the pictures. And, and oh, right, yeah, yeah. rightfully yeah. so. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'll do my best to try to get them up there as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. I tried, uh, like, the PHP galleries and things like that. I thought I'd put together a little website for them. Nothing was working because I am trigger happy <laughs> when it comes to the camera. I think I took, like, hundreds of photos. And so, no, it was pardon great. me, it was just not working. It was, well, you when you got it. the whole time. Because finally, after trying all that stuff, after trying 
creating a gallery and uploading it as, as a PHP or HTML gallery kind of thing, it just wasn't working out with all those photos and the video and this and that. I said, what am I doing? Oh. So I took them all and I saved them on the pogo plug. And I was like, why did I not do this the first time? All it took was but you to will put next them time. There. So I put them on the pogo plug, I put in Christy and John's email address and go invite. And boom, they've got an email that says, uh, Robbie added photos to the folder, Christy and John's wedding. They click on it and instantly they've got access to the thumbnails. They can click on them, it blows them up in a preview window instantly. Then they can download the full resolution images. So these are the big, you know, seven megabyte mm -hmm. images if they want to print them or things like that. Wow. They can click on the videos. It's, it was fantastic. Sweet. And so now, you know, I've been using my Pogo Plug as an external device for uh, backups and things like that primarily. But now I'm using it like crazy after, after the wedding. I'm, oh, I've yeah. been using it more and more for sharing photos. Then Halloween mm -hmm. came the next day because mm -hmm. the wedding was Saturday. Halloween was the 31st, uh, the Sunday. And so, of course, that's how I ended up sharing all of our Halloween photos and the video. So I was walking around in my Star Trek uniform with the video camera. <laughs> uh, shared it with the family and friends. You gotta like it. Pogo We're scaring plug. little children and dogs on Halloween? Pogo Plug is fantastic. I had one guy say, oh look, it's Captain Kirk. I said, dude, wrong show. <laughs> it's Lieutenant Commander Robbie. Speaking of which, Mail and This tweets, I blame you, pointing this tweet at me, I blame you for my sudden interest in Star Trek The Next Generation again. I thought I got over it 15 plus years ago. <laughs> And Mel and this, I just have to say, you can never get over it. I can remind you about your love for Star Trek. I can, I can rebirth that, but uh, it, it's I'm there. I'm getting geek you, all you, over me, John. You can't get rid of it. <laughs> it, it. There's something about it that if I, if I turn on the, the TV and Star Trek Next Generation is on, I've seen the episode a thousand times, but I'll still watch it. It's all good. That has been your recent tweets for this week. Leave me alone, Becca. It's on. No, she loves it. Oh. She watches it with me. Fantastic. That's my kind of girl. <laughs> you can catch game. us. You can catch our uh, Twitter account, twitter.com slash Robbie Ferguson. Or, of course, Kid Eric. Twitter.com slash Kid Eric with two Ds. And uh, we would love to hear from you. And uh, hear what you have to say on Twitter. Two two needs wistik. What? Okay. <clears throat> what just happened? Somebody asked if there's a new version of Pogo. New version of Pogo plug? Yes. Is it out now or is it? I'm trying to remember if I'm under embargo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there is potentially a new version of Pogo plug. And yes, I believe it's out of embargo. Let's just double check. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more, just in case. Pogoplug.com is where you want to go to find out all about the Pogo Plug. And it is not an embargo, which means basically I know about it, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Pogo Plug Pro. This is not to be mistaken for the Biz, which they released previously. Uh, the Pogo Plug Pro is a beautiful black chassis, you can plug in up to four hard drives out of the box, but then you can use a switch to plug in more. 99 bucks. With an asterisk. Exclusively available now at the US Best Buy location. So they're saying that you've got to buy it at Best Buy because they're trying to promote it, the fact that they're in retail now. All right. Fantastic, right? That is fantastic. Doesn't have, Pogo, uh, doesn't have USB 3 so far as I know, but y you're, you're limited by your bandwidth of your network anyway, so it's not, it's not going to be necessary. 480 megabits a second on USB 2.0, uh, and I don't think it has USB 3. But you can use a switch to or a hub to get more hard drives if you want to. And the neat thing about the Pogo Plug Pro is it's got the Wi-Fi built in, so you don't need the extra dongle. Oh. So and for 99 bucks, it's a fantastic device. That's way cool. Pogoplug.com. Yeah, it's been out for a while, Lance man. I, I was pretty sure that we did announce it. But I just wanted to be sure because I get a lot of email. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Yeah. Cool. What else have we got? You got more for me? Any questions in the chat room? We'd love to hear from you. Category5.tv. You can watch the show live, of course, every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. 
and there's a nice little ticker on the uh, on the left hand side of the website you'll see that uh, not only does it have a countdown that shows you when the next show is going to be broadcast but also uh, it has a converter so that you can click on it and find out what time it is actually airing what day in your time zone so no matter where you are in the world you'll be able to find out exactly when you should expect the show so you can pencil this in your calendar and never miss a live broadcast and that way you can get your questions in and we welcome your questions all right well you have four minutes left and mmd uh, murphy says what wait no gimp tip no gimp tip today okay <laughs> no tip today but if you have a question about the gimp i'm happy to answer it for you oh nothing like a cold cup of coffee mine's nice and hot i uh <laughs> thank you for doing the news hillary that was great i went and got myself a coffee it was <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. Mm. Could have offered. You could have offered. <laughs> we'll talk about this after the show. I did offer you a coffee. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, you drink yours black. I do. John, thanks. Oh, you forgot the printer. I didn't forget. Oh. We're, just, we're winding down, and that's the last thing on my list. He <laughs> didn't forget. Take more qualifiers. See? I've been crossing things off. Take more qualifiers for brother mfc j 615w you want to get your hands on this printer I'll, I'll bring up our website just in case you haven't seen this printer it's beautiful it's got uh it's the all-in-one multifunction center from brother it's one of their newest models it's got the built-in wi-fi they've got uh apps for your iphone your ipad as well as your android or your blackberry device that allow you to scan documents directly to your device things like that. Get onto our website, category5.tv, click on interact, and win a MFC J615W, right at the bottom of that menu. And you'll see there's the beautiful printer there. It's got a card reader, it's got a full color screen, it's got photocopying and color and black and white, it's got a sheet feeder that allows you to uh, automatically feed multiple sheets. If you want to scan them directly to PDF, for example, if you want to uh, print them or photocopy them, all that can be done. If, you, uh, if you'd like, you can even use the device completely PC-free because it's got the card reader, it's got the USB stick reader. You're able to print from USB. You're able to print from your camera cards just as if you were standing at a kiosk at your favorite photo finishing store. Uh, all that stuff can be done directly at the printer like a kiosk, so you don't actually need to have a computer connected to that device. And that's one of the wonderful things about Brother Multifunction Centers is the fact that they really work to make you wireless, make you uh, be able to access your printer from anywhere. Our printers uh, here that we use, we can print from any computer. They work under Linux fantastically, scanning, printing, whatever you need to do using the camera card reader. It's all available through Linux as well as Windows and Mac. Uh, so do check that out. That's the MFC J615W and we are giving one away this season at category5.tv. Click on interact and at the bottom of that menu you'll see how you can cast your ballot and once we've gathered all the ballots and once we've decided we are ready to give that away all right we're gonna do that we're gonna do some pretty amazing prizes this this winter so uh, that's gonna sort of kick things off so all right it's been fun having everybody here the show it, always, it, it zips by we talk after the show it's like where did the time go we made it through our list we said hi to our new folks there we go I do uh, invite you to submit a viewer testimonial. We didn't get any this week, uh, but I do love to receive those viewer testimonials, even if you just want to say hey, uh, and just let us know, you know if a tip has helped you, if you learned something from our GIMP tutorials, or if this week you're able to get Entropia Universe uh, Planet Calypso running on your system, we'd love to hear from you. Just submit a viewer testimonial and uh, just let us know what you think of the show. And uh, I'd also love to hear from you by email if you've got a question, live at category 5 TV. Hillary, it's been great having you here tonight. I'll say. Oh, it's been a blast. I'm so glad I was able to make it back um, via webcam, the magic of webcam. Yeah. Um, but it's great. So thanks for having me. Cool beans is what I say to it. Cool beans. <laughs> Way to end the show. That's how we That's how we do it around here. John, it's been nice having you here too. And hope, hope everybody has a fantastic week. Uh, it's been a lot of fun and we will see you again next Tuesday night and don't forget we're going to be taking a look at those uh, those eco-friendly eco-alkalines 
from leiproducts.com. Check that out next week when we celebrate our 165th Whoa. episode. And of how Category will we be TV. celebrating? Just by having an awesome show. All right. It will be even more awesome if you are here. You're not going to say awesome, or please don't say awesome. I could say awesome. No, don't. But that's, don't. that's then. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody. See ya. See ya.